Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. So, last two weeks haven't been the greatest of my life. But, that's why I decided today we are going to need to have some fun. And that is why we're going through all of the crazy stuff I 3D printed over the last years that you could actually use in a workshop environment. So, without further ado, let's get started. Da 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 da! Da 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 da! Since I have no idea where to start, um, I may introduce you to Project Icebreaker. Have a look at this. You probably know the situation. Someone is coming to your shop and you don't want to cut to the chase right away. That's why I built Project Icebreaker in the first place. All you have to do is print the file, fill a regular balloon, and connect the two. You will get everyone's attention with this right away and everyone, technical background or not, will go something like this. You've basically created a very easy but yet efficient air bearing. Fun fact, this exact bearing with around 0.3 bars or 5 psi of pressure is already lifting its own weight and doesn't starve until you add some 60 grams on top of it. Isn't that impressive and oddly satisfying to watch? But yeah, what do you do just a moment after, when the awkward silence strikes again? Exactly, you show them how to keep everyone's favorite equipment clean and accurate. This isn't a 1-2-3 block, we guys used a 20-40-80 block. But sure enough, both of them can and should be stored in a very similar manner. Don't throw them in the rack or another storage. Just print them on cheap and easy to use cover. So last year I was producing parts that looked quite similar to this one. The drawing called for a sandblasted finish but only to a certain diameter and it had to be on the outside. It took me only one part to realize that masking this with tape wasn't an option. So what I did, I created this tool, printed a bunch of them they are kind of quick to assemble, so just put it in here. So I, I prepared a bunch of them, put them in the blasting cabinet and off you go. This is for all the people that only came here to say, ha, that thumbnail is fake and you would never use that. Let me just be clear on one thing. I don't do clickbait. Screw you. Okay, first off, you know the problem. You want to use your spindle through coolant drill, but have to hold it in the collet chuck. So up to now there's only one solution to this problem. To buy a sophisticated collet block which is blocking off the coolant, so the coolant passages get pressurized. I did have the same problem, so I quickly designed and printed this tool, which blocks off all the coolant coming through the collet. I guess this might not be fitted very well to high pressure coolant systems. I didn't test to around 10 bars or 140 psi and it held up just fine. For setting up raw stock to a very specific length I have to end up using three hands because I don't have a foot switch. Also it tends to pull the raw stock inwards the chuck so setting something up very precisely is kind of impossible. It has become somewhat of a routine whenever I'm setting up a job on the CNC lathe and I do the cat work infusion. First thing I do is to design some fixture to set it off to a certain length from the chuck and while that is printing I can do cat work and mostly they finish at the same time. 
Also, I'm building a collection of the standard sizes um, I tend to use the most. And uh, later on, I added the screw at the back, so if I do have the right diameter, I can set the, the length to any, any value I want. This little device saved me so much time over the years. As you can see, it fits behind the jaws with only two millimeters of space, but it held up around thousand clampings up to now. It acts as a small spindle stop and enabled me to produce these parts with a very close tolerance lengthwise. Another really fantastic project, as it turned out, were these face masks, which I did design and print in larger numbers during the start of the COVID pandemic. While they are not being used that much today um, in terms of COVID, um, but I tend to use them quite often for like woodworking applications or stuff where just there's a lot of chip and debris and stuff flying around. This is only 3D printed parts except for the framing which is a thick aluminum filler rod and it was quite a challenge to dial all those printers in to match like tolerances and stuff but it was a really fun one and maybe we'll discuss that later on. Also while we're here, have I ever mentioned my girlfriend's 3D printed jewelry collection? That was fun. Okay, speaking of lathe tooling, so let's imagine you do have your DRO and you can set in various tool offsets for each tool. So the question is, how do you label them? Or something like this. Whatever I tried in the past, it always seemed to be more, more of a pain than a relief. So what I ended up doing was to design these simple parts, which you can just throw at your tooling. They will stick wherever you want to have them. They're super easy to make. I used some silicon molding to fill in the numbers to give them a bit more contrast and a 10 by one neodymium magnet in the back and I and I tend to put them wherever the least amount of chips get or where I do have the best visibility in terms of holding your tooling for the mill you got the most various choices ranging from very bad to very expensive so my favorite solution to this are these guys. I did design them like three years ago and they're just made of simple PLA which I had at hand at that time. And they are still holding strong even though with a big face mill in there. So also 3D printing is about the little things I guess. I mean I've got around 12 air outlets in the whole shop and mostly I'm using that same style of pressure pistol and everywhere I hang them I printed a few of those small little knobs and that enables them to hang freely so I have that on all my pistols and it's working flawless so also while we're at the Maho Last year, during some maintenance, I accidentally destroyed 
this coolant distributor um, which is actually feeding all the nozzles uh, behind the tool and this part I had no idea where to get it so I since this is a decal maho that uh, later became DMG I set up a, an account to get that replacement part <laughs> and uh, yeah when when I got that quote from DMG I I swear something fell out of my pants in order to get this running again I printed this adapter I designed that out of the pieces that were left from the broken part um, it is actually printed on this surface down here so it's maximum stability in throughout the part and uh, this is printed in PETG so no problems with UV with coolant and etc and it's uh, holding up fine for over a year and this literally costs pennies have a look at this embossing stamp. 3D printed bending tools are becoming really popular for prototyping and small series production. We could do a whole video just on this topic. This particular stamp is for adding braille signs to paper or cardboard. Speaking of bending tools, I was super excited to see that it is actually possible with this is just plain and simple PLA and I was just screwing around, around with this but this is one and a half mil stainless so one day we have to do a separate video on this What about the infamous power feed adapter? Also check out these templates for drilling and cutting purposes. I've designed and printed so many over the years and it saved me so much time. Also, for just one off production these work perfectly. If you have to drill hundreds of holes with these, uh, it's a good idea to maybe glue in some, some metal rods or some metal guides or bushings just to prevent them from, from wearing out too fast. Or just print more of them in the first place and use one after another. They just cost you pennies, that's okay I guess. Last but not least I want to show you some short clips of everyday items I gathered around the shop. There are a lot more, but you will see those eventually in part 2. Like this silicon mold. This technique gets used so often to coat or embed something in silicone and it's super handy on top of being dirt cheap. Or if you need some kind of a sign around the shop. As well as construction prototypes, unique solutions to hang your posters, or simple but awesome add-ons to your power strip. As well as really unique business cards. And many many more all right guys so that has got to be it for this week again I want to thank all of and, and welcome all of the new subscribers that came here last week's I've never dreamt of yeah having like over 6,000 people over here that's a crazy amount um, also I was completely blown away by the fact how many people contributed to the discord channel I set up in terms of getting the robot to run um, I'm in the works of getting it fed with electricity that is taking a lot longer because you know German laws and stuff yeah but I'm really happy to have all of you guys over here 
and it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoy your stay as well. So in terms of this video, this has got to be it for this week. Um, I have got a lot to do as well. But next week, I hope you're going to see a video of the beast that is living down there. So get hyped for that and see you there. Bye.